Now everyone has a work book, pen or pencil? Yes? Very good. Um, there will be an evaluation form hopefully by the end of the session that you, you will need to fill out, okay? And, and I hope you all can stay because somebody was saying that maybe you might have to leave early, but we, we hope you can stay. Okay, and this is an interactive presentation, so I'm going to ask you all to participate when I ask you questions or to make comments and so forth, okay? So let's go over the program really quickly. Um, we're going to go over the definition of stress. What are some of the common sources of stress? What causes stress in our lives every day? Our reactions to stress, there's, there's physical, emotional, behavioral reactions. Um, the stress response, how does that work? Right? What happens when uh, we uh, are in a stressful situation? That's going to be really important to, to place close attention to. Options for change. What are our options when we're in a stressful situation? How can we make things different? How can we reduce our stress? And of course, stress management skills. We're going to go over um, some of those. And what's important about that is that I really like for us to have some time at the end of the session to practice a few of the exercises that you can take with you and you can teach uh, your family members, your coworkers, other people. Just a few exercises that you guys can learn and you can do them right on the spot at work, wherever you're at. It doesn't take very long. Um, keys to managing the stress, what's important about that, and there's the exercises at the very end. And I hope we have the time because we need We'll, we should be done by 10.30, okay? All right, now, our learning objectives. This, this is what we want to um, take with us. You want to be able to identify, again, the common sources of stress and how we react to it. Everyone reacts to stress differently. We're gonna talk about that. And we're gonna learn about ways to respond differently, right? That's what we're here for. And hopefully apply these stress management techniques at the end. Everybody's good with that so far? All right, so let's get started. So let's start with the definition of stress. Stress is actually an internal, I think you have it in your workbook. It's an alarm system that prepares your body to act in response to any real or perceived threat or fear. The key here is real or perceived, right? So even if we're not in a real danger situation, our body feels stressed at the time. Um, and so the key to finding, uh, to find it, it's finding what is our level of stress? How much can we handle? And when we get there, are we able to manage and cope with it? That's what we're gonna be talking about. So I'd really like for you guys to participate and help me with the comments, the questions, and so forth. All right, so what are some of, what are some of the common sources of stress in your everyday life? Can anybody tell me? What are some of the common sources of stress? What makes you stressed every day? Time. Time, for sure, when we don't know how to manage time, right? Okay, what else? What are some other things that really, really, like, stress us out? Change within the day is important. Okay, very good. Finance. Anything else? Finances. Finances. What about family? Finances. Family situations, right? And you know, with our COVID situation, how we have family members that are sick, we have family members that are dying. Those are all very stressful situations, correct? So we have the chronic uh, also events that happen in our life. If we're dealing with, with uh, coworkers that are sick, with family members that are sick, and they're chronically sick, we don't, we don't know when they're gonna get better. We have chronic situations. We have medical issues too. That's very stressful. If we're dealing with a, a medical situation, we're still having to come to work, that's a chronic stressor. Something that's like ongoing for a long time. So we also have the daily things like dealing with traffic. There was a lot of traffic this morning as I was coming in. I mean, I was like, wow, it's because school and work, everybody's going to school and work at the same time. So it took me longer than I thought, but I was still here early. So good. Um, but those are some daily stressors. What else is daily for you guys? 
multiple projects? Multiple projects and they're due. Do they all at the same time? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> multiple, multiple projects, demands at work, uh, changes, changes in schedule. If they tell you like, oh, by the way, you've got to stay late today. Things like that. They really like produce a lot of stress in us, correct? Then we also have major life events. Like I was saying, people die, our family dies all of a sudden. And then with the COVID thing, it's been a super huge stressor. I, you know, I lost a few good friends during COVID last year before the vaccine came. And that was really a difficult time. So we've all gone through that, I'm sure. Um, when, you, when you get a new job, that's a major life event. That's a stressor. When you move, when you relocate, right? When you have the birth of a child, when you have a divorce, when you go through a divorce, those are major life events. Those are all things that really like stress us out, right? And there's nothing wrong with stress. I mean, we all live with stress. In moderation, stress is, mm -hmm. is okay. Stress can be um, motivating, it can challenge us, and it can really inspire creativity in us. Lots of times, you know, uh, stress is something that's actually needed in our lives, but we have to be able to cope and manage with it, right? When we don't, then that leads to more, more issues for us. Okay, so um, I know these pictures are like not the best, but that's what we were talking about, you know, like your, your everyday things that happen at work, your life <coughs> events, the traffic, things like that. Those are the sources of, uh, of stress. Can anybody else add anything else to that? No? We covered a lot, right? Okay, so let's go to, let's see, physical reactions. How does our body react? How does your body react to stress? I want you to look at the, the monitor and look at what it says up there. These are some physical reactions that our body has when we're stressed. Has anybody experienced any of these? Yes? Can anybody add to any of these? Difficulty breathing. You get hungry? You get hungry, you eat a lot, you overeat, or you don't eat, you get a nervous stomach. That's what happens to me. I get a nervous stomach when I'm stressed and I don't, I don't eat. I but some people eat. Anger. Oh, uh, we're gonna go, this is physical, so then we're gonna go emotional, and then we're gonna go behavioral. So this is our physical reaction, all right? So physically, what happens to us? Who gets headaches? It's up there. I get headaches. Oh yeah, that's behavioral. We'll get there in a minute. <laughs> Yes. I'm sorry? Weakened immune system. Oh, yes, absolutely. A weakened immune system. That's physical. Definitely. Um, excessive sweating, fatigue, tired, tiredness, your heart pounding, uh, muscle aches and headaches, stomach aches, like I said, nervous habits. I think people tend to uh, like bite their nails, no? Oh, that was just gonna say. That's a that's a nervous habit. Yeah. Have you all ever noticed in your like your coworkers or maybe family members, and that they they have like a nervous sort of tick? You know, they'll be like, I don't know. You know, it's stress. That's what it is. And so that's what that nervous habit is. So now we're gonna look at. Can you add any more? Yeah, well, I think we'll the eye the eye twitch. Yes, I've seen that. There's all kinds of twitches, uh, eye twitch, nose twitch, uh, hands uh, shaking. Uh, there's, there's plenty of physical reactions. And sometimes if we don't understand what's happening with a person, we're like, what's wrong with them? But many times it's stress, many times. Okay, now let's look at the emotional reactions. Let's look at that list. I think you guys have it on your list, right? On your workbook. Can you all, can you all add to this list? Impatient. Impatient. Very good. Yes. Forgetful and distracted. That's one that I that happens to me too. I kind of get distracted when I'm stressed out. Um, how about fear and anxiety? Right. 
You get anxious, you get scared. Crying, very moody, or very feeling tired. Getting angry easily, like very irritable. That's, a, that's one that I notice in myself. Um, how about having trouble concentrating? Lack of concentration. When we're, we're, when we're stressed and we're thinking about too many things, we can't concentrate on one thing, which is our job at the time, right? If, if we've got a family member sick, we've got something else going on, it's so hard to concentrate, very hard. So we've got to be able to, to learn to manage. Any, anything else? Socially withdrawn is another one, and I think that was going to be under behavioral, but let's find out. Okay, behavioral reactions, here it is, right? <clears throat> so, have you noticed any of these reactions, like in yourselves, or in coworkers, or in your family members, and people around you? Look at these. Avoiding family and friends, she just said social isolation. Feeling irritable, still kind of like very grumpy, just jumping at people, easily agitated, it's kind of the same thing. Lashing out is when you get mad at something, at someone or something, and you don't even have a reason for it. You just got mad at them, and you're like, what's wrong with them, right? Remember that it could be that they're going through some very stressful situations, so we've got to be like understanding a little bit. Do not take it too personal when somebody lashes out at us because we don't know what's going on in their life. And this could be it. And there's the one that he, someone mentioned over here, turning to cigarettes, alcohol, and drugs. What are some other vices that people turn to? Shopping. Coffee? Shopping. Oh, shop, oh definitely <laughs> shopping is a big problem. Yes, definitely. Or, or, you could spend too much money. Or fishing, or fishing, when I'm stressed, I, I Fishing, no, fishing, fishing is a good thing. Yeah, yeah that's fishing. why, when I'm stressed out, I go fishing. Well, that's a good thing. But, uh, but, these are, but these are some things that harm you, right? Yeah. Cigarettes, smoking, alcohol, drugs. How about gambling? I've actually met people that uh, they get stressed and they go gamble, which is worse because you spend all this money, and, you know? So people turn to their vices, and these behavioral reactions are not always in our best interest, right? Can anyone add anything else to that list? Things that maybe you've noticed in yourselves or in other people? Becoming very, uh, um, I'm trying to think of the word. Very, not so much isolated, but, or isolated and you don't do anything. Withdrawn, maybe? Withdrawn. Or lethargic? lethargic? Like, lethargic is like not interested in anything, like you lose the interest in just kind of like there. Hey, let's go out. No, no, I don't want to. Yes. Yes. That's definitely behavioral reaction. It's like kind of like staying withdrawn, lethargic, staying to yourself, Love avoiding you. people. <laughs> yes. Yes. <clears throat> and, and the more you push the person, sometimes the more they, they like, they don't want you to push them, right? It's very hard to help someone when they don't want to help. So anyway, so we've looked at the reactions now, right? There was three of them. There was the, the physical, emotional, and behavioral. And now, let's see, the next one is a stress response. This is, this is what happens, or this is like the progression of events that occur when we are in a stressful situation. So if you look at the top of the triangle, you see how there's it says circumstances or persons. So something happens. It could be that you had a discussion, an argument. Something happened with uh, your boss, with your supervisor, with maybe even a family member, your partner, your child, your adolescent child, your teenager. And so you had this argument and right away, I mean, this argument, this discussion, this event that happens, it triggers a thought. You notice there where it says beliefs and expectations? That is, you know, what we think is gonna be impacted and affected by what we believe in and what we expect. If we had a fight with our teenage son and our 
our expectation is that they respect us and they don't talk back to us, but they did, ooh, that thought right then is gonna determine how we respond, how we feel and how we behave. So it's like a, that's a progression in the cycle of events. We have a situation that triggers a thought and then that thought will produce a response, which will be, oh, I'm mad. And then I'm gonna like round him or you know do something to this child. So what's important about this cycle or this uh, progression of events is that we actually have choices. At each one of these points, we can modify the situation, we can modify our thoughts and what we expect, or we can modify our response, which is how we behave, right? Normally how we feel is gonna come after we modify what we're thinking, right? So options for change, I believe, is, is the next uh, slide. Let's look at, yes, let's look at what are some of the things, and I want you to be specific. What are some of the things that you have done to change the situation when you've been in a stressful situation? Anybody? What are some of the things you've done? Um, I think of it over here, it says managing time. Like at the moment. At the moment, before? Yes. Yeah. Time is definitely something you could do to change the situation, right? If you're stressed out because you're like, you know, there's traffic and you're running late, well, you could have gotten up earlier. Time management, time management, right? Uh, and it does work, doesn't it, if you get up earlier? What are some other things that you've done? Be specific. It could be in any one of these areas. That's changing the situation, changing your thinking, or changing your response. We're gonna go over some, some actual things you can do, but I wanna hear from you. I think the response we give is, what I've still witnessed in the response from your office. Uh, there's in our department, there's a lot of anger within minutes, seconds, you know, we are out there doing some things. This came in uh, an emergency. It's the way we respond against our employees. That's what they recognize. That is the difference. What I've seen in my office. If your leader doesn't respond in the proper way, everything goes to hell. But if the guy is there and sets it up and he responds well, you know, that's the way the whole thing goes down. But if you don't, then you, you react to the leader. Yes. You, you react to the leader. Proper response. exactly what we're going to talk about. It's, it's a good response. Yes. Anything else? Anybody else have any uh, specific examples of when you've changed like one of these? Remember, these are the points in the triangle and we can change it at any time. What I noticed about this uh, diagram was that you know how it, it increases? Like the, the little house? The little house. But what I noticed is changing the situation sometimes we can change, sometimes we can change part of the situation, but we have more power in how we think, look how it's bigger, and how we respond. You know, our choices are greater in how we respond and how we think than sometimes changing the situation. Look at COVID. We can't do anything about COVID. We've gotta look at how we think about it and how we respond to it. But right. you're, you're talking in, a, in, a situa in a, like an ideal situation. Sometimes you don't get a chance to re you respond and you get mad that somebody you know, it, it falls on you. You're, you're talking about an immediate, like an immediate reaction. Yeah. Sometimes you don't get I a think, chance to I think I think you all, because I understand that some of you all, you know, work with like in the fire department or in police department or I mean, any job is going to have like. Um, it's gonna have that component of crisis. Like, you have to act, like now, right? And you get an order from the supervisor, oh, well this happened, you need to come now and you gotta fix it. And you're like, okay, well, wait, I'm doing something else. So I think a lot of times, you know, the way we respond to our, to our supervisor or the boss, whatever, we need to stop and think, like how do we respond to them, 
right? How do we respond to them? Um, if we're stressed because of other things, we're probably gonna like lash out, right? Because we're already stressed out. But we do have choices though. We have definitely the choice. Choice, uh, we definitely. Have the choice to stop and think before we say something. Absolutely. We always have that choice. At the end of the day, we always have a choice. We always have a choice. And that's why, that's why we're looking at choices. Okay, so, you know, we're gonna look at some things that you can do. Um, and I think this is the next slide. It talks about time management because time management is so important for us. Um, and it falls under change the situation, right? Because if you manage your time, it's important to look at how we do take care of our time. Um, how many of you guys are like procrastinators? Right? You leave things till the last minute. I think we all are. At, one point. at, at some point at or some another, point we all time. are. And that, of course, you know, is not good time management because we wait until the last minute to finish the project or to prepare the report or to do the job that we usually were asked to do, right? Because we're like, oh, we'll do it later, we'll do it later. But that's not really, that's what that's talking about. If you look at the first point up there, be aware of time and value yours. We need to be aware if we're procrastinators. We need to be aware if we are perfectionists. What's a perfectionist? Anybody here? Or have to be right. Yes, you've got to be perfect or else it's not good. Yeah. So you, you start a project and then you don't like to do it again and you do it again and you do it again and you wasted a lot of time, right? So we have to be aware of our of ourselves, of, of, of how we are, how we see things. So being a perfectionist is obviously not a good thing, always. And neither is being a procrastinator. So avoid perfectionism and avoid procrastination and that's gonna be better time management for you, right? Okay, so what about, you know, you mentioned that all of a sudden you have multiple tasks, multiple projects to finish. You know, what can you do? What can you do? Can you get help somewhere? Can you ask for help? Good, right? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. If someone is there to help you. I would say that's changing your situation because you're looking for somebody to help you. Um, it's important to to ask for help and support when you need it, I think. So that falls under that changing the situation. Uh, I think prioritizing, you know, always prioritizing. I think in any job, you're always having to prioritize. Uh, what, what task is more important than this one? Right? You have all these tasks and you're like, okay, I'm gonna prioritize. You know, which is important to me? Um, I think that it's important to know where you wanna spend your time. And this is not just about your job, but this is about life. Like if you want more time with your family, right? You want more time to build your relationship with your children, with your, with your parents, with your partner, then you have to begin to look at what is important and what am I going to do so that I can spend more time where I want to, right? <clears throat> because some jobs are very demanding and they require your time like beyond, correct? Lots of jobs do that. So you have to like think about what is important to you. What are your priorities? That's another thing. Um, then again, in time management, what is, um, you know, when is your best time to work? When, is the, when do you have like motivation? When do you have energy? When do you have the most energy? Is it in the morning or is it after lunch? I know after lunch, I, could, I, mean, I was always struggling. I used to have like a, of course, I, I am now like semi-retired guys, right, by the way. But when I had a full-time job, a regular job, it was like, after lunch, it was so hard because you ate, you know, a lunch and then you were like, you, how could you be home this late? I didn't have energy. My best time was in the morning. So take advantage of when you feel like you have more, more energy, more motivation to do your job and hey, work really hard at that point in time, right? Makes sense. Okay, 
So, so this is time management. That's one way you can change a situation. Uh, and I knew today that I, when I was driving over here, I came from Mission, and I knew the traffic was going to be bad. So I started out at 8 o'clock. And I thought, oh, I'll just be there like in you know 20 minutes. Well, actually, it took me 30 because of the of the school traffic and all this other stuff. But I wanted to be here early because I didn't really even know where. I knew where the city hall was, but I wasn't sure where I was going to park and what I was going to do, and and I wanted to see the layout and stuff. So, okay, that was one less stressor for me. Didn't know how many people were going to be here. This is a great group. Okay, um, can you guys add anything else to this? Yes. I've often told my daughter, she's a, a junior in high school, which is the most stressful, that she, she wants to make straight A's. Mm -hmm. And so she's very, like you said, like a perfectionist. perfectionist. And so she tries to do everything that she needs to do and just do it perfectly. And uh, we started noticing that she was getting too stressed out and she was having all these same behaviors lashing out you know being very emotional and, and stuff like that and so we sat her down recently and we decided as a family decide what's gonna what you're gonna fail in exactly and maybe not a complete and total fail but decide what do you want to get a B in what is it okay for you what assignment isn't all that critical that you're not going to worry about? You know that it's due, but you're going to not worry about it. You're going to put it on the back burner mm -hmm. and just not stress about it because you've gotten all these other great grades on this class, so you can miss one assignment so that you can just so she not can stress out as much and stress out her family because <laughs> yes. you guys worry yeah. about her, right? Absolutely. And so we're trying to get her to. We want her to fail at one thing so that she can learn how to deal with failure. You have to learn to deal with failure, absolutely. Rather than dealing with it, you know, once you go out into the working yes. world and everything. And that first confrontation that she has where she fails at something that might be far more devastating, but it's something that's happened to her in high school. Right, makes sense. You're trying to prepare her <coughs> for like the future. Um, yeah. Kind of piggyback off that, something uh -huh. that I know I struggle with time management is being comfortable with flexibility. So mm. you kind of catch up with the perfectionism of over planning. So you have everything planned down to the minute, but like happens, but then that kind of throws you off. Have you all noticed that when we, you know, we can have like the best plans and the best schedule, and then it, it never fails. Like something comes up and you have to change your schedule, you have to change your plans, and sometimes that upsets people. You know, I mean, it gets you stressed out because you're like, wait a minute, it was supposed to happen like this. Why isn't it happening like that? Like, oh, it hasn't. And so you can see people like all tense and stressed out because you have to be flexible. It, you can't be rigid. It's like, well, it's gonna have to be like this. And if it's not this, then I'm not gonna do it. Or, and you ha you've got, I'm sure you've gotten employees that, that say that. But I'm gonna do it like this. And like, no, then I'm not gonna do it. And you're like, well, what do I do with you? <laughs> But flexibility is so important with time management. Absolutely, absolutely flexibility. And actually in life, just just life in general, you know, I could have mapped out my uh, route to work today, but what if there had been an accident? I would have go around somewhere other way. And then it's happened before, right? Where we're like, oh my goodness, like I can't go through there. That's gonna like put me out five minutes, but hey, okay. We just kind of have to go with the flow. When you learn to manage your stress, you feel like less stress, right? You're going with the flow. That's important. Okay, so we are looking at still changing situations. I'm, I'm, it's so much information, I can tell you guys. Now, we're, we know that many, many times, many stressful situations happen because of communication issues, right? There's not, there's no clear communication, right? Or maybe, maybe we just, there's a conflict because we didn't communicate very well. Either way, it's, it's about communication skills. So that's what this uh, slide is about. It's about how do we, in changing a situation, somebody got mad at us, 
we had a confrontation with somebody, how do we clear it up? How do we address it, right? And so um, clear communication is super important. Be very practical, you know, listen to the person, focus on the speaker, uh, be open-minded. Um, and one skill that if you all haven't heard of, maybe you have, is active listening. Anybody ever heard of active listening? It's a skill that you use to have better communication with people. No, anyone? No? You have? Can you tell the rest a little bit about that? Partner, they just wanna like talk, 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 talk. and be over there going like, well, why don't you do this, and why don't you do that? And they're like, what? <laughs> because they just want a big ear. They just want you to listen. So you, you always like respect and listen, and then you say, do you want me just to hear you out? I tell my spouse that all the time because every time I start to say something, he'll be like, "You should have this. You should have done that." Excuse me. Stop right there. I don't want to hear you. I just want you to hear me out. I just want you to hear me out. So it is okay to check with the person that you're, you know, that you're with. It's like your family member. Yes. Works for you? As long as it works. As long as it works for you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I think as, as also underneath here says problem solve and solutions. Part of that is this is sometimes when we're in conflict is because you know uh, we need to determine who owns the problem. And I think you have that also in your workbook, that little uh, worksheet. Mine was missing in there. But I think what they what they have is there, who owns the problem? You decide who owns the problem, and then you determine what skill you're gonna use, what communication skill you're gonna use. So for example, if they own the problem, like whenever they call you in, obviously, they call you in, like I was called in a few times, that's when you do active listening. I mean, you really listen to the person, you empathize, you paraphrase, you summarize what they're saying, you reflect back what they're saying, and your mouth, right? So you use active listening. Now, if I own the problem, if I have a problem with my child, with my spouse, with my customer, with my client, with my supervisor, then we use iMessages. And I know you guys have heard about iMessages. Anybody? iMessages? No? Okay. We use iMessages instead of you messages. When we have a problem with, like I have a problem with you coming late. I don't go and say, hey, you're, you're late, you're this, you're that. No, we use I messages. I really have an issue with employees when they come in late. I, I need for you to do this. I would rather that this happen. So I messages are sentences, statements that start with I. We use how you use how you feel, like I feel like this when this happens. And then you make a statement about perhaps a behavior that is annoying you, that is a problem, I need for you to be on time. I need for you to be on time, and if you're not gonna be on time, I need for you to call me. Let me know you're gonna be late. Does that make sense? Great. So, when you use I messages, you're de-escalating the conflict. Okay, does that make sense here? Anybody have any examples of that? No? Using I messages? I don't have any. You don't have to do Okay, very good. But just something for you guys, it's like I'm planting a seed. If you guys never heard of it, go look it up. You can research, you know, you can Google anything now. But I guess it's just a really important to de escalate Okay? I think I, in my area, I wanted myself to work together as a team, like in large farm. Uh -huh. And I think we do, we do it in a different manner where something like that needs to be addressed for that gentleman. Instead of saying I, he goes, the department is. That's where the conflict starts. Instead of that person addressing that employer directly, like you said, it, it creates an issue. So we go to that thing, you know, and then our then we deal with that employer on the side. Like, uh, he wants to know 
If you guys notice, though, communication is a big um, issue or can be a big issue in, in stress, right? In producing stress. So, if we learn more communication skills, then we can reduce or decrease our stress level if we know how to handle the situation. Now, the third thing I think you have on that slide um, is when we both own the problem, like it's mine and yours. What do we do? It says here, problem solve and negotiate, which is what uh, this lady over here was doing with her daughter. They had a problem, the daughter had a problem, it's like, hey, it's our problem. They both had a problem. And they sat down to negotiate and compromise. So those skills are super important in decreasing stress levels, okay? And again, we're looking at just changing the situation at this point in time. We still have quite a bit more. I think we're gonna hurry those now. Okay, so let's see here, uh, what is next? Uh, let's look at changing your thoughts. You can reduce stress by changing how you look at the situation, your perspective on the situation. So look at the examples up here. If you're telling yourself, look at the column on the left and it says it's overwhelming. I mean, you're, you're telling yourself it's overwhelming. I mean, you're gonna be stressed. But if you tell yourself, well, I'll take it step by step, you feel different, right? So it's how you think about something. Um, here we go again. Well, it's, you know, when your boss comes and tells you this. Here we go again. Well, no, this time things can be different. Maybe it won't be the same, right? We gotta have, we gotta stay positive. To me, it's the positive outlook. Instead of, of looking at it, really negative. And the next one up there says, this won't work. I remember I used to say that to myself. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, but if you say, no, I'll try it again. I'll give it another try. So it's about how we think, right? negative or positive, that will change what we're going to feel and what we're going to do, how, how we respond behaviorally. And the last one, I should help out in my child's classroom. You know how we feel really pressured to go and volunteer when our kids are little? It's okay to say no. Sometimes we just can't do it. We, we overload ourselves. We commit to too many things sometimes, right? We gotta work, we gotta go to the school uh, program or we gotta volunteer, now I have to go to this other meeting after work, and now I have to go to this social function after, like late, and so we overcommit ourselves, and it's okay for us to say no, I'm not gonna be able to, I can only do so much, right? So it's okay to say no. And lots of times I think we feel guilty saying no, correct? Yes? Right? Yes, we do. I mean, I know I do too. I try to pack everything in, and it's just not gonna happen. I have accidents, I mean, <laughs> when you're stressed, Okay, so yeah, changing the way we think is very, very important. Um, perhaps, like, you miss the bus or you miss the train or something, and you're like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? No, it's okay, you know what, let's, I'm gonna rest. I'll take the next one. It's okay, because I was giving you to rest. And, you know, we, we really need to stop worrying. And somebody said, Failure, I think it was that young lady. It's like, I'm gonna fail now, because you know what, when you fail, it's a learning opportunity. You learn from that failure. <clears throat> so, if we see failure as a learning opportunity instead of failing, then that's definitely a positive perspective, right? It's a positive outlook on a situation. 
<clears throat> so remember that we're still talking about that triangle and we're looking at how we change the thought. Yes. Oddly enough, once we had that discussion, mm -hmm. she calmed down quite a bit more. Great. And she, and I'm sorry, I know it sounds like I'm bragging, <laughs> but she wound up with hundreds in every single one of her classes. Oh my goodness. After all of this. After, so after you problem said, solved. She, she relaxed <coughs> and she said, you know what, I'm not going to worry about this. And so she was a lot more relaxed and she did all her other work that at the end of it, she had time to, to finish the stuff that she had set aside. You gave her permission to fail. Yes. And she was like, I'm not going to fail. Yeah. That's awesome. Very good. Okay. So uh, on your little workbook, you guys will notice that there's a few uh, like phrases. You don't see them? It says rewrite self-talk. You have that on your workbook? <coughs> and it says, um, so sometimes we have unspoken rules or unspoken beliefs uh, that increase our, our stress level. So for example, I can't stand, like I can't stand somebody being late, right? If we, again, say that to ourselves, like that's not being positive, right? How can we rewrite that? So that's part of your homework. How can we, what can you say instead of I can't stand? Anybody? What can you say? Okay. Yeah, volunteer. Instead of saying I can't stand, what would you say? And you can write it down in your own. should be on time. No. People should be. No. People are different. Everyone's different. People are different. And the last one, it's always or never. No. Don't use those words, always or never. Use sometimes. Right? Can we use it sometimes or never? <laughs> sometimes. No. Because always and never are very, like, they're not real. They're not, it's not, it's not never. But we use it all the time when we're in arguments with people. We say, you never do this to me. And it's not true. It's not never. It's hardly. <laughs> but it, it's, and, and most of the time. You can say most of the time, sometimes, um, every once in a while. But always and never are very absolute. And they're very negative. So we don't want to use that. Anything else? Okay, now let's go to, I believe it's change our response now. All right, change our response. And that's the third point of the triangle. So they talk about building your stress buffers. What do you all think those are? Anybody idea? I think you might have them in your workbook. No? no? Not sure. They talk about the three C's, the three C's, like challenge, like seeing challenge as a learning opportunity, seeing challenge as an opportunity to grow and to learn, right, when you have a challenge. Um, being committed, because commitment um, helps you to know what's important. If you're committed to, to your job, you love your job, you're going to do what you got to do, right? 
you love your family, your partner, you're gonna do what it has, what you've gotta do to make it work. So commitment is super important. And the last thing is control. Like in other words, sensing that you have some sort of control in the, in the stressful situation. If you feel like you have control, just like we're talking about, hey, we can change something here, we can change something here, or we can change something here in the triangle. Hey, we have a sense of control, and control leads to what? A reduction in stress. When we feel like we have a little control, then we feel less stress, correct? So we need to remember that. These are our stress buffers. These are like, to me, they're like attitudes. What is your attitude? Do you see challenge as an opportunity to learn and grow? Okay. Are you committed to what you're doing? And the, and the last one that I just said, right? Um, which is the, the control, are you feeling in control? All right, so the next thing they say is, can you read that up there? Learn to moderate visceral reactions. Well, visceral is just a fancy word for emotional. Emotional. Learn to control your emotional reactions. So this is what we're gonna, in a little bit, we're gonna start doing our little exercises. But it's talking about slow breathing, like this young man said earlier, like taking deep breaths, right? Uh, when you do deep breathing for four minutes, four minutes, you gotta do it for four minutes, it lowers your heart rate and your respiration. Okay. So that is a super important skill that we're gonna practice in a little bit. Now, learn relaxation techniques. We're gonna do one of those too. And that is gonna <clears throat> help relieve your muscle tension and your fatigue. So, practice visualization. I, I, I like to call that, take a mean vacation in your mind. Visual, visualization. Because you imagine a place you like, you enjoy, you go there, and you can stay there for a few minutes and then you come back and you're all refreshed. So we're gonna do that one too, I hope. Um, and then maintain your physical reserves. Well, that's about eating well. I think we have a nutritionist here. Uh, uh, avoiding, uh, of course, excess alcohol consumption and nicotine, drugs. You know, you wanna avoid that. You wanna exercise more? And you definitely want to renew yourself with rest. You've got to have rest. So those are your physical reserves. Okay? Now let's look at what are the benefits of stress management skills? They're up here. Can anybody, can anybody tell me what you think about these? The first one, control distraction. Obviously, right? If we're less stressed, then we're not gonna be distracted. Okay, the next one, determine what's really important. That's priority, right? It helps you prioritize. It helps you, oh yeah, if you're not stressed, you definitely enhance your relationships at work um, and at home, right? When you're not stressed. So when we're stressed, we really create kind of like havoc at home and at work sometimes. Because we're lashing out, because we're doing things we're not, you know, we know. But sometimes we feel stuck. We feel stuck. So it's really important to remember that you do always have choices, right? Like to look at the situation as you're thinking and then at your response. All right, um, and what else does it say? Of course, you increase effectiveness at work by focusing um, on what you gotta do, right? When you're stressed, it's very hard to stay focused. It's very hard. You're very distracted and, and you're probably not very productive. <clears throat> and it helps you to take things in stride, like I was saying, go with the flow. When you don't have stress, you can go with the flow. Let's see here, I think we're almost to the end. And this is where we're going to, to begin our little exercises in a minute. Uh, we do have to adopt, uh, it says adopt an attitude uh, of responsibility. Uh, again, the control, like if you feel like you're responsible, you have some control over the problem, then you're gonna feel like you got choices. 
right? Do something specific. This is what we're going to learn the little exercises in a few minutes. We're going to practice them. And then we're going to seek information and ask for help. And I'm going to go over the uh, your EAP information. Um, your employee assistance program is OPTUM, O-P-T-U-M. And they're the ones that brought me here. And um, if you need more information about that, well, we're going to talk about that in Puerto Rico. I can give you that information. But let's look at some of these. Um, I think this is the last slide before the, yes, before the EAP. So let's look at some exercises. And I think you might have some in your workbook. But I want us to, <clears throat> to look at some, some five specific things that you can do when you're stressed. The very first one, I think, on your little workbook is pause. Pause. Stop. Whatever you're doing, just stop. Pause. Because that can break that cycle of whatever you're thinking, whatever you're stressed about. Um, it, helps the, it helps break down the tension. Um, and it, it, it unlocks the process. So just stop. Like, freeze. Who ever played freeze tag when you all were young? Right? And you, you know, we were running and whatever, and then somebody called freeze, and then you just kind of like pause, like stay whatever position you're in, and we all be laughing. This is what you do, you pause. Whatever you're doing, just pause. Stop. For a few minutes. And then go on. Because it's very hard to, to be productive, to be effective when you're stressed. The second thing you can do is to breathe. And this young man had talked about that. So let's see if we can do some breathing right now. Now, there's a difference between just breathing, but also deep breathing. So deep breathing, what I want you all to do, they call it belly breathing here. What I want you all to do is I want you to place both of your hands like on your abdomen, your stomach right here, because this is how you know if you are doing deep breathing. And what you're going to do is you're gonna take a very deep breath, very slow deep breath, and you should feel your, um, your abdomen, your, your, little, your hands protrude, and they're gonna stick out because you're taking in all this breath. And then as you exhale slowly, your, your, uh, you should be going in, like your stomach should be going in. So you should feel it. If you don't feel it, you're not doing deep breathing, all right? So everybody take a deep breath, if you can, slowly. And then slowly exhale. This deep breath. 
breathing, it activates your relaxation response in your body. We have a relaxation response in our body. There's an actual nerve that runs from our brain all the way down through our organs, our heart, our lungs, our, our stomach, our, you know, all our organs. And it, when you do the deep breathing, it relaxes the body. You should feel, that's why your heartbeat, your right heart rate goes down and your respiration. Okay, so it's very important to keep breathing, do it for four minutes. Today we probably only did it for two minutes, but if you do it for four minutes, you should feel very relaxed. Okay, all right. Now, the third thing you can do is move, right? If you're sitting at your desk for too long, you need to get up, you need to stretch, you need to walk around, anything. Stretching, yawning, any movement at all is gonna help you with your stress level. When you sit for a long time, I know your back starts to hurt, your lower back hurts. I mean, you really need to just get up and move around, okay? Get up and move easy. Any movement is gonna help you. All right, number four, take a break. Of course, take a break. You can always take a break. So, check for tension spots in your body, like are you biting the inside of your mouth? Sometimes we do that. Like I, I do that in my sleep sometimes. I, I bite my cheek inside, and that's like they say stress. Um, are your eyebrow or your eyebrows arched? Is your neck tight? Uh, are your shoulders hunched? Are your teeth clenched? I mean, those are all signs that you're stressed, right? Check, check to see if you have any of those. <coughs> We're gonna do an imagery exercise, the visualization we we're talking about now. I want you all to do that with me. Now this exercise, again, it focuses on your mind, uh, on something relaxing. It gets your mind to think about something very relaxing. You may close your eyes if you feel comfortable. If you don't, it's okay. Just kind of focus on like one, one spot. You can find a spot on the wall, on your table, somewhere on the floor, but focus on something you don't feel comfortable closing your eyes. Um, and if you don't like the, you know, I'm gonna take you to the beach. But if you don't like the beach, you can pretend you're somewhere else, okay? If, it, if you don't wanna go to the beach. Um, but just remember that when it's time to come back to the room, you come back to the room. This is gonna take us about five minutes or so, hopefully. We're gonna do uh, the home. So first of all, I want you guys to imagine Again, if you want to close your eyes, fine. I want you I want you all to imagine you're at the beach. You're really looking forward to being there. Notice how warm the day is and how brightly the sun shines. Smell the ocean. yourself starting to relax. You really like it here. Now you start to take a walk on the sand. I want you to feel the sand under your feet. Pay attention to the texture of the sand. Its color the warmth. Now notice the other people on the beach. They're at a distance. Do you hear them laughing? Or talking? Do you hear the seagulls and the sounds of the waves? gently splash ashore. Smell the scent of the sunshine ocean. You can smell the food, salt in the air, and fish. Yes, you could 
see you walking on the beach, you start to feel calm and energized. It feels really good to be here. Finally, you reach a comfortable spot and you sit down. the waves coming down. As you come out of the water, you feel how warm the sun is, how quickly it dries you. You sit on the sand and you watch the sunset. You notice the brilliant colors in the sky. You feel the air becoming cooler against your skin. Relaxed and alive, you feel. As the sun sets, you notice the stars begin to shine and the moon to rise. You feel relaxed, peaceful, calm, and happy. visited, like I imagine I'm there again. It's just, it's just very relaxing. 
So remember you have that tool. When you take a break, go do an imagery exercise. Go to the coffee room, to the lounge, whatever, or even at home, you can go to the bathroom or quiet place and just go there, wherever you wanna go in your mind. It's, it's a visualization. We call it an imagery exercise, but it's meditation, right? And on your, um, we're not gonna have time to do this exercise, but on your workbook, you have how you can also do it like when you're by yourself and it, and it asks you to draw a circle and then to start writing. So it's a little different focus, but it's the same idea. So you meditate by yourself. So you all can do that. Because I wanted to do one more exercise before we finish, okay? And this one is called progressive muscle relaxation. Has anyone ever done that? Very good. <clears throat> I'm just gonna do, it'll take us another five minutes, and then we'll finish in the last five minutes. But this, uh, this muscle relaxation, you can do it lying down, like on your bed, or you can do it sitting down where you're at. So just make sure you have room to spread your legs, because I'm, I'm gonna ask you to stretch your legs out. So you have, you have find yourself, position yourself so you can stretch your legs very good. We're gonna start with our head. We're gonna start up here, and we're gonna work ourselves all the way down, all right? Now, I'm probably gonna have to in the chair so I can teach you guys. Let me get this. All right, so sit comfortably in a chair. And um, first, I just want you to notice your breathing, like normal breathing. Just focus on your breathing. Notice in and out, breathing. And in between our little muscle uh, exercise, we're gonna do deep breathing. So I want us to start the deep breathing that we learned earlier, right? Belly, so take a deep breath, so inhale, slowly, and then exhale. One more time, inhale, and exhale. Very good. Now I want you to take your head, and I want you to take your chin and point it towards your chest, like down, just like that, and you can feel the, the muscles in your neck, in the back, tense a little bit and hold it just for a couple of seconds one two now look up again and I want you to notice the difference doesn't it feel relaxed now when you were stretching it down you could feel the tension correct all right now I want you to take your head and without moving your body just turn your head to the right and feel the tension on your neck you can feel the tension just hold it for a few seconds now bring it back listen up very good. Now we go to the left. And just for a few seconds, one, two. Okay, now bring it back. Notice the difference. Notice the difference. When we are when we are stressed, our muscles tense up automatically. And we're not even aware of it. It's subconscious. That's why we start having back aches, head aches, all kinds of body aches. Right? Okay. Now we just did our here. I want you to do your shoulders, put them up towards your ears, like this. There you go. And you can feel those muscles in your shoulders, your neck. Hold it for a few seconds. Now relax it and feel the difference. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna do our um, like we're gonna pretend like we want to be like big breasted, like we're gonna like take our arms and kind of go backwards like this, like you want to get your shoulders together, like you big breasted, and you can feel the muscles pulling, tense, right, your shoulders, very good, hold it for a few seconds, now bring it back, and notice the difference. The point here is to notice the difference when your muscles are tense and when they're relaxed. Let's do another, just a couple of breaths, deep breathing, so another inhale, slowly, Hold it, and then you exhale slowly. One more time, inhale. Exhale. Now I want you to pretend you wanna be skinny. So you're sticking your tummy in, you're sticking your tummy in, so your abdomen, you're holding it in just for a few seconds. 
like you're trying to be skinny. Okay, you can feel those muscles right now. Relax. Feel the difference. Feel the difference. You got it? Oh, man. You can, you can tell. Now, this one's going to sound a little funny, but I, I want you guys to do it anyway. Now, you're sitting down on your buttocks. So your cheeks, I'm gonna call them your cheeks. I want you to squeeze your cheeks together like you're trying to hold something in between your cheeks, like hold them, so you're, you're tensing your cheeks together. What, it's funny, but one, just a couple seconds, just a couple seconds. Now feel it. Okay, now relax it. Feel the difference. No. You didn't feel the difference? <laughs> <laughs> you're holding your cheeks, you tense your butt, your cheeks. Okay, do it. Okay, we're, we're gonna skip that. We already did it once. Okay, now I, now let's go to our arms. I want you all to stick your arms out like this, and I want you to make fists, like you really like tense your muscles, tense your arms. You should feel tension in your hands, your arms, maybe even your shoulders. Yes, just for a few seconds. Just few, just I want you to just sense it. Now let it go. Relax. Put them down. Feel the difference. You feel it. Okay, let's do that one more time. Tense. Now relax. Very good. Awesome. You all are doing awesome. Okay, now the last part is our legs. We're going to stretch our legs, and I want you to stretch them out in front of you, and I want you to point your toes towards you so you can feel that stretch on your leg, your thigh. So you're pointing your toes towards you just for a few seconds. Notice that tension in your muscles, right? Okay, now relax and feel the difference. Feel the difference, okay? Okay, one more time. Stretch your legs out, but this side I want you to point your toes away from you. And this is a little different, but you still can feel that muscles pulling, right? Okay, just for a few seconds, feel it, feel it. Okay, now relax. Very good. And we're gonna finish with some breathing. So, another deep breath. And then exhale. more time. Inhale. Exhale. One last time. Inhale. And exhale. Very good. This is wonderful. Now, <clears throat> this muscle relaxation, the purpose of it is for you guys to be aware of when you feel that tension in your muscle. So if you practice this, it doesn't take long, five minutes, you can do it laying down before you go to bed, you can do it during the day anytime you want to, but it's for you guys to become aware of when your muscles are tense. So sometimes we have back aches, sometimes we have, you know, it's because our muscles are like knotted up. So that's what this little muscle relaxation is about. Did y'all like it? Yes, very good. Okay, so let's keep going because I think we're almost out of time. Okay, so um, I think this last one is your EAP program. Um, employee Assistance Program, Optum. You guys have free counseling. I'm sorry about the misspelling on counseling. I didn't do the slides. Uh, I did make them aware that they misspelled counseling. I guess I'm a perfectionist, right? Um, but there is free counseling and support for all employees and eligible family members. Uh, it's easily accessible, voluntary and confidential, of course, in accordance with the law. And um, it's a service that can provide support for personal or work-related issues. And it's staffed by experienced professionals. Optum uh, has like a list of contracted therapists and people that can help you. And so you would contact Ms. Clarissa and she gets a hold of... Professional help is if you can, if you have any of these issues happening uh, in your life. If you're having sleep problems and it's been a long time, it's been chronic, like you were not able to sleep, you're really having a difficult time sleeping. Uh, you have performance issues at work. I mean, they're chronic. Like you just you just can't perform. You're not able to. Uh, relationship difficulties with family or friends. You know, we talked about conflict earlier. Um, but sometimes they, the problems become so bad that you're so stressed you just can't function. And you can ask for help. You can ask for support from your HR department. 
um, if you've lost interest in hobbies that you normally liked, you know how we talked about that also. Um, people, you know, love, we, most of us have hobbies and things we like to do, but when we begin to lose interest and we don't want to do anything, <clears throat> we really need to look for help. Um, <clears throat> okay, how about lack of care? Like about normal everyday work tasks that you don't really care how you do your job. It's just kind of like sloppy everywhere. Uh, or you have extreme anxiety or worry more than normal. Are you feeling overwhelmed or sad for more than two weeks? If it's chronic, longer than two weeks, you need to ask for help. Um, or you have noticeable change in your appetite, you're eating too much or not eating enough, you've lost your appetite. Uh, and of course, behavior and, and coping methods have become harmful to yourself or others, whether that's through aggressive behavior or unhealthy habits such as alcohol or drug use. And we do have a lot of uh, people that, that are abusing drugs and alcohol, and we know that sometimes we have it in our family members. We need to ask for help for them. And of course, if you have thoughts of harm to yourself or to others, then that's definitely a crisis situation. Ask for help, don't keep it to yourself, okay? So are there any more uh, questions or concerns that you might have that I can address? Uh, because we're like almost done here.